An invasion of Canadian super pigs. A school scraps honors classes in the name of equity. And why has help been so lacking after the Ohio train wreck? That and more on this week's headlines. Covered. I'm Chris Chappell. Legislators in New Mexico are considering a bill that would make the state the first in the U.S. to have its own official aroma. This is kind of like how most states have their own official flower or motto. Only now, they'll also have a state smell. Must be nice being a legislator in New Mexico. Sounds like they've got a lot of free time on their nostrils. And what is being proposed as the official smell of New Mexico? Green chilies roasting in the fall. That's ridiculous. Not that New Mexico wants an official aroma, but that it's anything other than the smell of meth cooking in a camper out in the middle of the desert. If the bill passes, it could lead to other states following suit, meaning we could see official state smells like Texas, barbecue ribs and gun smoke. New Jersey, self-tanner, axe body spray and box wine. Florida, vomit after getting day drunk at a margaritaville. And of course, the state smell of Delaware, Victory. Because anytime you're lucky enough to be in the Diamond State, you've already won. Speaking of things with strong odors, pigs. America may soon face challenges from the arrival of so-called super pigs from Canada. These Canadian super pigs were created by crossbreeding domestic pigs with wild boars, resulting in incredibly intelligent swine that can tunnel under snow, making them very difficult to hunt. And if you're wondering why Canada wanted to create these super pigs, well, it's because they were trying to make Canadian bacon taste as good as regular bacon. Wild pigs are a real problem. They spread disease and destroy crops. They cause up to two and a half billion dollars a year in damages. In response to this news, that guy on Twitter a few years ago who got mocked for saying he needed AR-15s to defend against feral hogs said, see, I told you so. And these super pigs are even worse because not only are they a threat to local plant life and crops, but also animals. They've been known to kill deer and elk. Man, this is the worst thing to invade the U.S. from Canada since Justin Bieber. So next time a vegan asks you how you can eat bacon, you should say it's because I'm trying to save the environment. Sometimes the people who try saving the environment are the ones who wind up hurting it. Case in point, Hundreds of New Jersey residents are protesting offshore wind energy development. They believe it's responsible for dead whales that have washed up on Jersey and other East Coast shores. While blaming green energy developed to help the environment for destroying the environment seems strange, it's not that far-fetched. Poorly thought out green tech can do more harm than good. I covered that extensively in a previous video. Link to that is below. Now, Republican New Jersey Congressman Chris Smith called out New Jersey's Democratic Governor Phil Murphy, saying, Today, the whales are sending us a tragic message that demands transparency and accountability, both of which have been sorely missing from Governor Murphy's plan to use New Jersey's coast as the prime location for the offshore wind industry in the U.S. And yes, you heard that right. A Republican is calling out a Democrat for not caring about the environment. What's next? Are Republicans going to accuse Democrats of not spending enough money on social welfare programs? Murphy called this campaign disinformation and said he wouldn't stop offshore wind tech. He also said there was no evidence that this is what was killing the whales. Okay, but all these dead whales are certainly suspicious. Something smells fishy here. And no, that wasn't a pun. First of all, because whales aren't fish, they're mammals. Secondly, because this is New Jersey, so it obviously smells more like self-tanner, Axe body spray, and box wine. More after the break. Welcome back. Researchers announced that a fifth person has been cured of HIV. The procedure for curing HIV involves a risky and invasive stem cell transplant. The patient had the procedure done in 2019, but it was too early to tell if he was free of the disease. But after four years of being off his medications, he still has no traces of illness and was officially declared to be cured. 
This is great news. Hopefully this cure will become more widespread and easier to perform. And maybe we can soon cure other horrible conditions, such as cancer, heart disease, and feeling the need to post every aspect of your lives on Facebook and Instagram. I'd say we should start a marathon to raise awareness for this affliction, but people would just post selfies of themselves running the marathon, making the problem worse. Speaking of Facebook and Instagram, Mark Zuckerberg announced that Meta would be launching a subscription service called Meta Verified, where users can pay a monthly charge to be verified on the platforms. Zuckerberg explained, it's a subscription service that lets you verify your account with a government ID, get a blue badge, get extra impersonation protection against accounts claiming to be you, and get direct access to customer support. Essentially, he's completely ripping off Elon Musk's plan for Twitter. You know, that terrible idea that made it nearly impossible to tell who was who on the platform? And a pharmaceutical company was forced to apologize when a parody account posed as them and said they would make insulin free? Did I say terrible idea? I meant hilarious. Sure, go for it, Meta. What could possibly go wrong? Ultimately, Zuckerberg is banking on people wanting to be verified so everyone knows they're real. Which is silly because being real on social media is an oxymoron. If people were honest on Instagram, every post would be this, with the caption, my feet fell asleep while scrolling through reels again. No matter how much content I consume, it's never enough to fill the aching void in my heart. Hashtag get on my level. Experts in Europe warned that potassium bromate, a food additive used in over 100 products in the US, is believed to be carcinogenic. According to a food expert at the University of Sussex, there is evidence that it may be toxic to human consumers, that it may even initiate or promote the development of tumors. Potassium bromate is banned in Europe, India, and China. Yeah, China. China has higher safety regulations on this issue than the US. This is like finding out that Darth Vader is a more responsible father than Mr. Rogers. There are several other chemicals banned in Europe that are allowed in U.S. foods. Some experts think it's making Americans sick. The Food and Drug Administration defended themselves in a statement assuring they have strict regulations and evaluate food to make sure it's safe before hitting the market. It said post-approval, our scientists continue to review relevant new information to determine whether there are safety questions and whether the use of such substances is no longer safe. Well, I feel better. After all, officials in the U.S. would never put Americans at risk. I trust them about as much as I trust that water and air in East Palestine, Ohio are safe right now. Culver City High School in Los Angeles eliminated 9th and 10th grade honors English classes to increase equity. It came after concerns there weren't enough black and Latino students enrolling in 12th grade advanced placement English. According to the district superintendent, it was very jarring when teachers looked at their AP enrollment and realized black and brown kids were not there. They felt obligated to do something. What a coincidence. Whenever I hear that someone feels obligated to do something based on the color of people's skin, I feel obligated to say that sounds kind of racist. This move has upset parents and students. Since, you know, getting rid of honors classes because they feel black and brown students will never be able to get into them sounds kind of racist. Also, according to data presented at a school board meeting last year, black students comprised 15% of the student body and made up 14% of 12th grade AP English classes, a difference of only 1%. Meanwhile, Latino students made up 37% of the student body, but only accounted for 13% of AP English enrollments. However, this data doesn't differentiate between students who are and aren't fluent in English, which ultimately is a fancy way of saying that the teachers at Culver City High School maybe should take an AP statistics course before making any more decisions in the name of equity. Lowering standards doesn't elevate anyone, it just brings other people down. And if enough schools do this long enough, that's how you wind up with President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho. Remember folks, Idiocracy was just supposed to be a movie, not a documentary. And after the break, Russians prank called Angela Merkel. Welcome back. Russian pranksters pretending to be Ukraine's former president, Petro Poroshenko, called former Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, to discuss the situation in Ukraine and Belarus. Merkel's office released a statement saying she was suspicious during the prank call. I assume she knew something was up when they asked her if a Mr. Freely was there. First initials, IP. 
You can tell Russia is having a hard time against Ukraine when they're now recruiting Bart Simpson into the war effort. Speaking of the war, it's now officially been a year since Russia invaded Ukraine. And U.S. President Joe Biden made an unannounced visit to Kiev and met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. While he appreciates, Zelensky probably thought, Biden, my make-a-wish was for John Cena. The purpose of Biden's surprise visit was to boost morale and reaffirm America's commitment to Ukraine just ahead of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion. Russia tried to downplay the visit. One Russian lawmaker said, Biden in Kiev started his election campaign in the most heroic surroundings in order to prove to everyone that he can still do it just like in the good old days. What? Grandstanding for political points? Biden? No. That'd be like saying the cookie monster enjoys chocolate chips. Never. So was this trip a big deal? According to experts, eh. Putin was clearly agitated, as during his State of the Union address, he announced Russia would pull out of 2010's New START Treaty, a pact with the U.S. that put a cap on nuclear weapons. Although, to be fair, Putin gets agitated and starts talking about nukes over everything. Barista, this isn't how you spell my name. I'll unleash fury on you the world has never seen. However, Putin clarified he hasn't pulled out of the treaty yet, and Russia's foreign ministry said they would respect the caps on nuclear weapons. A former Defense Intelligence Agency officer thinks Biden's visit won't change Putin's Ukraine strategy. She said, Putin's current assessment is that the purpose of Biden's visit is to put pressure on Zelensky to negotiate for a settlement with Russia. He knows the U.S. and Europe are depleting our weapons stockpile as a result of massive outflows. So Putin thinks that Biden wants Ukraine to surrender to Russia because the U.S. is tired of losing resources in this war. Well. Maybe that would be the case for other presidents, but this is blank check Biden we're talking about. The U.S. has sent Ukraine over $100 billion since the war began a year ago. And Biden pledged $500 million more in aid during this trip. $100 billion is nothing to Biden. He spends that much on breakfast. And considering the price of eggs, that's not that much of an exaggeration. Seemingly the only thing President Biden doesn't want to spend money on is the train wreck in East Palestine, Ohio that polluted the area with toxic chemicals. According to a White House official, the Biden administration initially denied a request from Ohio for disaster relief because what East Palestine needs is much more expansive than what FEMA can provide. FEMA is on the front lines when there is a hurricane or tornado. This situation is different. The reason the situation is different is because hurricanes and tornadoes cause a lot of structural damage to homes. Essentially, they're saying there's absolutely nothing else the White House could have done in the situation, so why bother to help at all, right? Don't worry, because Norfolk Southern, the company whose train derailed, vowed to take responsibility for cleaning up the mess caused by their wreck and decision to burn the toxic chemicals. That wasn't altruism, though. Their CEO made this vow after the EPA said they would fine the company up to $70,000 a day if they didn't clean up their mess. That amounts to $25.5 million a year, which sounds like a lot, but considering Norfolk Southern's gross profits were over $2 billion just for the fourth quarter of 2022, they wouldn't even feel those fines. So if you're hoping Norfolk Southern will do the right thing, I wouldn't hold my breath. Unless you're breathing the air near East Palestine, then yes, I would absolutely hold my breath. Fortunately, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announced FEMA will come in and provide assistance after all. Some have said the sudden about-face was due to the negative press the White House got over their lack of response to the situation. To which I say, what? Grandstanding for political points? Biden? Oh. This all smells a bit fishy. And if anyone knows anything about smelling, it's Biden. Now that I think of it, Biden should be the official smell of Delaware. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.